let's have a look at question one in this video. So because the text is very long, I'm just going to go through the highlight of the question over here. We have a worker that can work in two periods when he is young and when he is old. Now there is a cost of effort in both periods and there's also an option to not work, to shirk. With the probability P, the firm is going to observe what the worker is doing. With the remaining probability, the firm will not observe what the guy is doing. Now there is a production, right, an output when he is young and when he is old. There's an alternative utility in working in a different company. Now let's have a look what happens at part A. What's going to be the minimum level of the wage for which an old worker chooses to work at this firm and will put high effort? Okay, uh, so first things first. We want the worker to work at this company, meaning it must satisfy the participation constraint. The worker must be attractive, attracted to our company. So the wage that we're going to pay to an old worker, meaning the wage for an old worker, must be greater than the alternative wage. And the alternative wage is going to be the O, right? This is the alternative uh, utility that he would get. Actually, this is the actual alternative wage that he would get in a different company. So that would be V old and because we want the worker to work in our company and put high effort we must take into account that he will put the effort so he will incur the cost of effort because we're speaking about the utility of the worker the expected utility of the worker and if the worker knows that he's going to work at our company he will take into account the cost of effort as well now there's one more thing that matters is that we want the worker to put high effort versus shirking so we have to keep in mind that the worker himself is gonna uh, require a certain wage for that because because we want that the wage of the old worker when he is working hard to be greater than the alternative of shirking as and if he is shirking there is a probability p that the firm is gonna observe that the worker is shirking the firm is gonna observe that the worker is not working so he will fire him meaning with the probability p the worker is going to get zero money and there's going to be no loss for him because he's not working and the remaining probability one minus p the firm is not going to observe that the worker is shirking so the worker is going to get his money without putting any effort meaning he will still get this wo hope this all makes sense now it's a matter of math we'll just we'll just work with the math here wo minus the cost of effort must be greater than p times zero that's just zero so this term goes away one minus p times w is going to be WO when we open the brackets minus P times WO minus P times WO. What else matter here? We want we want the wage of the world worker, right? We want the wage of the world worker. Um, hold on a second. OK, so I did an unnecessary step over here. There was no need. There was no need to open the brackets. Let's do it that way. We'll just take the term with the wage of the old worker to the other side because we want to keep the terms that we're interested in on one side only. So we will have WO from here minus the other term minus WO times one minus P must be greater than the cost of effort must be greater than the must be greater than the cost of effort of the old worker. What can we do now? Now we can open the brackets. So now we can open the brackets um, and we would have WO minus WO times one is WO. WO, so minus WO times minus P becomes plus P times WO must be greater than the cost of effort. Uh, okay, some terms cancel out here. WO minus WO go away. We want to be left with the wage of the world worker. So we will have the wage of the world worker being greater than the cost of effort divided by that probability. Okay, so we have two conditions here. This condition must satisfy and also the other condition must satisfy as well, the participation constraint. So this one over here. And actually, if you write this in a, in a simple way, that would be that the wage of the worker must be greater than VO plus the cost of effort. Now, which one of these wages are we going to pay? So since we have two conditions to satisfy, we're going to pay the condition that the wage that satisfies both at the same time. Meaning, let's give actually some, some numbers to, to see how, how this works out. If WO must be greater than 11, assuming this would be the answer, and here WO must be greater than 9, well, if we give this wage that the wage is going to be greater than 11 euros, then we satisfy both constraints. This constraint works. And 11 is also greater than 9, so the other constraint also is satisfied. Meaning, we're going to give the wage that is higher to satisfy both constraints automatically. Hope this makes sense. In the next video, we'll go to part B.